Hello, welcome back to the ADHD Energy Empress podcast. It's Marley here. It's lovely to be chatting with you again if you've listened to the other episodes of the podcast. And if you're new, welcome. I've had a little bit of a break from the podcast. I was looking this morning. It's been about two months and it's lovely to see that people are still listening to the podcast. There's new downloads every day. And that really made me want to get back into it and make another episode because if you guys want it, then I want to provide it. I find it a little bit difficult sometimes thinking about the topic matter because that um, random memory access, you know, trying to access things in the brain without a prompt can be a bit difficult. And then there's aspects of perfectionism as well that come in with ADHD. But I've thought of a topic today and this is the thing. Sometimes when you just trust and you give your brain some space to think, then the ideas will pop up and it's always helpful to just access things from one's own life as well. I did start recording a podcast and I had to stop because I am a full-time homeschooling mom and my kids weren't settled and I hadn't planned on it. And also I didn't really feel like the subject matter was what I wanted to talk about at the moment. I was going to talk about burnout, but I'm so sick of hearing about burnout. I'm not sure if you are as well. And I wanted a slightly different um, perspective on what I've been experiencing. So what I'm going to share with you is actually how executive functioning plays a massive role in neurodiverse brains. And what I've really realized is not just how I've been knocked about with what's happened in my own life and notice that my own executive functioning has gotten low and I feel like I'm getting to the point of almost burning out and I'm just focusing on the fact that I need to actually just start drinking more water because I want to feel healthier in my body. I want to exercise and get that energy back, but I can't exercise without eating properly and hydrating properly. And I think the key is really to start with that hydration. But isn't that such a boring thing to talk about? Yet again, we need to drink our water. We need to eat healthily. And there are strategies to get into that. But I'm pretty sure I've done another podcast episode about that as well about how ADHD goes in cycles and sometimes we just need to strip back to the bare minimum and that's where I'm at at the moment but 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 rather than just talking about that I actually wanted to talk about how I have really noticed now the contrast between how I'm functioning now and how I've functioned previously and there have been points where I've been quite high functioning. I haven't felt like it because I've still struggled and had that internal struggle and that really invisible aspect of dis- of disability and how neurodiversity can be a disability. It has that disability aspect, but we can also look at it in an empowering way. But there have been times when I've been able to manage so much and like keep all those balls in the air. I've been exercising, I've homeschooled my kids, I've been homeschooling and running businesses on the side and you know I've had times where I was going really well with getting this podcast out weekly and also I did a whole year of kids meditations. My meditation channel is Elvaria Meditations and there's 52 on Spotify and on YouTube And they came out every single week. And I've had times when I've been functioning well like that and then had, you know, a week of shutdown when I've dropped the ball and just haven't been able to cope. And I've had to have, have, you know, a break, have food delivered for a week so I just don't have to think about it and can refresh that executive functioning and really refill the cup. But overall... Being able to manage that level of executive functioning is actually quite incredible. And I've had all my strategies in place that I teach in ADHD Energy Empresses in the program. They really work. And I've known that it takes some time to build up to that level of um, functioning and having that skill set and being able to maintain that 
in your life. And I've known that you can get knocked about and kind of you have these cycles where you reach the lows. But what I've really been realizing this past week is that what this actually means is that executive functioning is a skill that can be taught and we don't have these base levels that we are necessarily used to, but we can actually go beyond that. You can increase your executive functioning to the point where you can become a much more capable person, but the point is not to be capable. The point is to be in control and um, empowered in your own life, which is really why I call my program ADHD Energy Empress is because I believe, and I do have a podcast episode on this as well, ADHD is all about energy. It's not just about focus. It goes beyond focus and it even goes beyond executive functioning because it's also about how much energy you have in your body. It's about how your energy changes over time. It's about the energy of your thoughts. It's about your hormonal cycle. It's about really tapping into the energy of your emotions and spoon theory, how much energy you have for things. And it's also so much about regulating our nervous system. I actually think that ADHD has so much more to do with the nervous system than to do with the brain because the effects we see in the brain come from the disrupted nervous system. And I was watching a psychologist talk about uh, the way the body responds to nervous system issues, to stress and to trauma and how a lot of those visual symptoms are related to the ADHD symptoms like foot tapping and trying to do these things that calm the nervous system. So there is a massive, massive overlap there between the nervous system and the brain and neurodiversities like ADHD. So through this experience that I've been having of this tremendously low executive functioning to the point where I have my bullet journal and I write down reminders still, but I'm just don't have that level of mental focus to be going and checking it and get being on top of things and planning. I'm really just living day by day at the moment for an extended period of time. It has been for probably the last four months where I just cannot think beyond the current moment, which is somewhat to do with the grief I've been going through as well but that's kind of another story I won't go too deep into it but I've been functioning fairly well in terms of grief I've been getting on with my life I don't feel like I'm grieving on an everyday constant basis but I'm sure it's there in my nervous system which is where these two things overlap But it's been really interesting to recognize why so many people struggle with their neurodiversities is because personally, I grew up with a mum who is a trained psychologist and she didn't necessarily know or acknowledge that I was neurodiverse and that there's neurodiversity in the family, but she implemented a lot of strategies in her own life. She's potentially type A, I guess, just has a lot of systems in place, is a big planner. If you're into astrology, she's a Capricorn. Um, And so I learned all these strategies from her. And then I had a big interest in psychology as well. From the age of 14 years old, I was doing CBT on myself without knowing what CBT is. And I really studied psychology and human behavior and the human brain um, and also personal development from that age. So I have 16 years experience implementing these skills and building them one on top of the other and learning about myself and my needs and my cycles. And when I fall off the wagon, how to hop back on, how to emotionally regulate myself, how to deal with different things that pop up in life to the point where I have this program. The program that I have fully fleshed out at the moment is the ADHD parenting program. ADHD Empress's 
itself is not fully fleshed out. Half the things are in video form and half of them are in written notes. But the parenting program itself is 11 hours worth of content over, I think, five different sections because there are so many strategies that can be implemented to manage ADHD. And the things that the ADHD Energy Empress program covers are so varied. It comes under the five pillars for well-being, for being an empress over your energy. Let's see if I can remember them off the top of my head when I've had a bit of a break thinking about it. Um, There's the mental aspect, your thoughts. There's the emotional aspect. There's the body there's your environment, and there's also the bonus one is spirituality, which not everyone's into, which is fine, but at least those four, maybe five, if you're into it, pillars really hold up your well-being and hold up your life. And we can go through cycles where one of them might be a bit low, like our thoughts might be out of whack, or we might need more emotional regulation, or we might need to focus on the body and our health. Or our environment, something might need to shift or something changes in our environment that then affects one of those other things like emotional regulation. And they all interplay together. But I'm such a big advocate for understanding and true knowledge, really giving you that power to understand yourself and understand what you need and It means that you can get to the point where you very quickly can address any little issues that come up rather than, you know, hitting a small bump in the road, as they say, imagine you're riding along and you hit a pebble or something and then you veer completely off course and it takes a while to get yourself back on your feet and get your life feeling back like it's back together and like you're juggling all those balls again. It can become a really, really quick process because you know what you need, you do it straight away, and you can also prevent yourself from hitting those little bumps as well. You can see them up ahead, you can take preemptive action so that you don't veer off course when they come along. So noticing myself get to this low point has really made me recognize the power in developing those skills. And I knew they were powerful and I knew that I was passionate about teaching them, but to actually have that contrast and then see how important they are has really made me feel refreshed about teaching it and also to have more empathy and understanding and remember what it is like when it is really hard. And if you're at a point where it's really hard, and especially if you've never been to the point where you feel like you've got everything together, you've got a handle on things, then I want to give you hope and encouragement that it is definitely possible. Whatever you've experienced in life so far is not necessarily an indication of your future. When I was a teenager, I loved reading success stories, like people who are inventors, celebrities, actresses, business people, because so many of them have an upbringing that is so different from the life they ended up having. And there are success stories from people who were in their 40s and 50s before their life seemed, anything seemed to come of their life. And they, they are really fun to read about and give you a lot of hope in life because so many of us just assume that our life is going to carry on exactly as it is now and that our past predicts our future. But life is an unwritten book and absolutely anything can happen. And you can shift your course in life by making changes. There's a saying, I'm sure I've quoted it on the podcast before, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. But if you do something different, who knows what can happen? So I encourage you to open your mind and have hope and faith in the infinite possibilities in life because any truly anything can happen and you can shift and change your life you can shift how you feel you can improve your energy in your body you can get healthier you can change your environment 
and a really good trick actually to be more open to those possibilities and feel like anything is possible is to have a holiday. Do you know that saying a change is as good as a holiday? Well, I personally think for ADHDers, at least for myself, I switch that around and I say a holiday is as good as a change because having ADHD, my brain can be really, really interested and in and keen to change things around and changing furniture around is one thing, but in the early days, like in my early twenties, I moved house so often because I needed that change. And I got to the point where I realized it's actually nice to have a stable home. But when I needed that big dopamine hit of being in a completely different environment, I would go on a holiday. I can also do mini ones, like a mini day trip somewhere as well to fuel that need for novelty. So I truly think a holiday is as good as a change. And the fantastic thing about holidays is that you're in a new environment. It really lights up your brain. It lights up new neural pathways because your brain is interpreting and processing all this new information. And it's actually a really good time to make changes in yourself and change in your behavior because you're not waking up in your same bed every day and going through those habitual motions that are physically in your brain wired in through through those neural pathways. So your brain will take those steps automatically. You'll get up out of bed. You won't really necessarily think about how you walk to the bathroom, how you brush your teeth and all that kind of stuff. It happens habitually. And there, there are those physical pathways in your brain. When you are in a new environment, your brain has to think about and process all those little things. It can't just follow the automatic habits. So it's a really good time to try out new behaviors and to break old habit patterns as well. So if you want to feel open to the possibilities, neurologically being in a new environment can do that for you. It can, it's why so many people get inspired on holiday or they feel like, oh, I'm, I'm always going to feel like this now, or, oh, I'm doing this new habit. I'm definitely going to do it when I go home. And sometimes those things don't translate sometimes they do if if um certain systems are put in place to help them but that feeling that you get on holiday is because it's a new environment and it does different things to your brain so anyway my point is have that hope and faith that things can be better for you if you're feeling down you're feeling stuck in a rut or you're not sure if you are capable of feeling like you are on top of your life or feeling like you are in control of yourself and your body. And I don't like the word control because it sounds a bit, you know, controlly, but it's more having that empowerment over yourself because you are your own human being. And it's not nice to feel like you're a slave to your environment, a slave to your body or anything like that. But my point is that it's possible to start building these habits. Another thing I wanted want to say is I think two podcast episodes ago, I was talking about my ADHD diagnosis. I think I talked about my initial experience with medication as well. So my experience moving forward with the medication was that I was having side effects. I was taking Ritalin and getting really bad neck aches And I've spoken to my doctor and he says he thinks that's hydration related. So I need to drink more water. But my problem is I find it difficult to drink more water. So at the moment, I am not taking the medication and I am training myself to drink more water because it was at the point where every evening I would feel like I was coming down with a bad flu, like almost COVID-like. And it was very unpleasant and I could not function. I couldn't respond properly to my kids. I was kind of couldn't move around easily and it was freaking horrible. Now I'm not giving you medical advice here. I don't recommend you stop taking medication. Um, if you haven't spoken to your doctor, I know for me it was short acting and flexible. So it was okay. It's okay for me to vary how I do it, but My point here is having those negative reactions 
was interesting for me because I really liked when I started taking the medication. I liked that it helped my nervous system calm down, that it cleared my brain. And I almost felt like the way you see people smoke marijuana and feel super calm and people who love smoking it because it is a nice experience for them. I almost felt like that was how the experience was for me. And marijuana is definitely not like that for me. But having this ADHD medication allowed my nervous system to just calm down and I could just sit and relax. And that was probably the most amazing thing for me. But for me, the reason I started taking medication was so I could be more productive with my business. And I realized that although I think the medication does take away um, some of the barriers, because of the grief that I've gone through and just because I'm a homeschooling mom as well, I realized that I need to actually make the choice. And that's been the difference when I've worked on my business when I haven't is because of making that choice. So taking the medication and still not making the choice to work on my business and actually not necessarily having the time to do so and also not prioritizing it. I do have an episode about priorities and your priorities aren't your theoretical priorities your priorities are what you're spending time on I wasn't prioritizing it so to take it for my everyday life actually seemed somewhat unnecessary other than for the calming nervous system effects taking it in my everyday life was not going to make a massive difference because I have so many systems in place that the medication wasn't necessarily going to make much difference in that area. The medication helps your nervous system. It helps you with focus. And so it can help you implement those strategies. And this is why they say pills don't teach skills. So it's been very interesting for me to actually learn that in practice as someone who has spent 16 years working on the skills, then taking the medication and realizing medication is not a magic pill. Medication is not be all end all. Medication does not fix anything. Medication does not motivate me. Motivate uh, Medication just clears the decks a bit, clears some brain space, calms my nervous system. And this is why they say that medication is that starting point for learning the skills. This is why I've heard that medication can be a good short-term solution for children while their brain develops, while they put these habits in place. So what a fascinating learning experience for me as someone who has studied um, neurology and how the brain works and how we create those habits to then contrast with medication and realize that if you can create this neurological wiring, these habits, these systems without the medication, the medication for some people at least can be somewhat unnecessary or just a stepping stone towards learning those skills. To be able to contrast that For me, to see just how powerful all these systems are that I've learned, that I've discovered, that I've experimented with, that I want to teach and am passionate about teaching and that I've helped people with, that I've helped, you know, my close circle of friends with and shown almost these little magic tricks, these little shifts that you can change in your life that make a big difference and see how powerful they are. When I've thought, you know, there's such a big focus on medication and um, people are such advocates for medication. And yes, if you've, your life has felt messy, you've felt out of control, your nervous system is out of whack, you don't have any systems in place, it can be great to take that medication and notice the difference straight away. And it's helped so many people, but it's not the be all and end all. And especially for those people who are struggling and really don't want to take medication. Okay, now that I've tested it out, talk to your doctor and see what works for you. But I fully support you and I 
honestly believe that the skills are so much more powerful and medication is just a way to get there. If you want to learn the skills first, I fully support that. I have been someone who's questioned that and wondered if it is best to try medication. I think it is good to test it out. I wanted to test it out so I could be fully informed. I encourage other people to test it out and talk to their doctor and go through that process. But if you cannot access that process wherever you are in the world or if you don't want to do that, I fully support you. Again, I'm not a medical professional, so I can't say don't take medication if that's what the doctor says. But the skills that you can learn can be very, very powerful. And the other thing is with our children and in my program and just my personal opinion is not to be too restrictive on children. Some people get to the point where it's very, very particular foods because they feel like they might trigger a child's behavior um, and that kind of thing. I don't believe in restricting children too much. I believe in changing what we are doing to facilitate the child to work with the ADHD. This is the main thing I say is work with your ADHD. It's just a different brain. We call it a disability because it gives us a different set of abilities and it can make it difficult to fit into the world that we currently live in. But I do love the hunter-gatherer theory that the ADHD brain has been around forever and it just doesn't necessarily fit into this modern world, but it has so many benefits. I truly believe that we can work with the ADHD to make it so we bring beautiful things to this world. But we just don't function the same way. We don't fit into a nine to five rat race, nine to five. Our kids don't necessarily fit into school. But personally, in this ADHD parenting program, which is everything I've ever learned and everything I can possibly teach, just implementing that information into my life with my own children, I feel like we do a pretty good darn job they function pretty well they could never fit into school but they function well they learn well they have some beautiful beautiful gifts and I've questioned whether I should medicate them and this is a definitely a personal choice definitely talk to a medical professional I'm not giving advice but having the experience of the side effects and being in a number of groups where adults will observe their children and say oh I'm not sure their behaviors changed or um, they'll kind of be observing from the outside how they think the medication's affecting the child, but you can never tell how the child feels internally. I've been in other groups where adults have said how affected they feel by different medications and to just know that adults can articulate things that children can't necessarily and to see how many internal changes and possibly negative side effects internally adults have felt that then the children who are on these similar medications can't necessarily express and the parents are just trying to determine from the outside like oh my child is quieter than usual or, oh my child is so upset in the evening it's because it, they probably feel very very different so my own personal stance is that my children will get their official diagnosis so that they can access medication if anything changes, if need be, if they want to. And I'm still curious about how medication can help them develop their brain in a different way. But personally, I think the main thing is creating an environment that suits them, is having strategies in place and changing how I respond to them and helping to support them in not just learning emotional regulation and executive functioning and social skills, but that most important thing of regulating their nervous system because everything stems from that nervous system I know for myself if my nervous system is out of whack I'm not going to function so well it's incredibly difficult if your body is stressed out your prefrontal cortex turns off you actually can't use the part of your brain that um, facilitates executive functioning so doesn't it make sense then 
that we should be focusing on the nervous system, on the body and having this foundation for functioning well and feeling good and being empowered. That's just what makes sense to me. If you cannot have this foundation, it's like trying to build a skyscraper on sand. You can't expect yourself, your children, anyone to function well if you are built on sand. We need to look after that foundation and make sure the body is regulated and then we can regulate the brain and we can look after all aspects of ourselves. That environment, that's another pillar. The environment comes in because that helps us to regulate the nervous system, which then regulates the brain and our emotions. It can sound so complicated. There's so many different strategies and hacks, especially if you are watching on social media and getting one hack in a minute and then flicking to another thing. It's not cohesive. It's really difficult to learn that way, which is why I'm an advocate for programs and my own personal way of doing things is to stack the habits up to first build that foundation of understanding and then shift the way you do things but if you're trying to process things like from TikTok and you're just getting like little snippets here and there are you actually implementing them in your life if you are that's absolutely fantastic but that is definitely the main thing is to start building these strategies and perhaps starting with something like the environment and again that's why my children and I well it's not just why because there are those pillars but I definitely tailor our environment to our needs and it took some trial and error but I know exactly what we need now I know how different environments affect us I know if we're going into an environment that is going to trigger us the things that we might need we might need some quiet time beforehand and after we might need to have white space on the calendar beforehand and after we might need headphones in there make sure we've eaten and had water because those really affect how the body is feeling It sounds like there are a million different strategies, but it all really comes down to those four pillars and just starting with the nervous system. And it's completely and totally possible. And I hope I have talked about the topic about how executive functioning is so, so related to ADHD and it all comes down to that I kind of took it back a step further and talked a little bit about how the nervous system helps build that foundation for the executive functioning but the main point of this episode is that those pills don't teach skills but the skills are so so powerful and make all the difference and you can live such a beautiful fulfilling life and achieve so much by implementing tiny little shifts in your life bit by bit things get better and better if you do things differently to how you've always done them you're going to notice shifts and changes so I wish you all the best I'm so glad to have created another podcast episode and I will be working on getting my functioning back up to that more elaborate state of being able to do more and more things on autopilot which is actually I'm going to say another thing I know I'm wrapping up I'm going to say another thing when you are stressed when your body is stressed the thing that happens is that you can't actually function at that higher level so you'll go down to your most habitual automatic functioning which is why at the moment I'm just doing that daily level of thing I'm just eating, drinking water, going to our regular activities and a few extra scheduled activities. But I find it really hard to do extra stuff like go to appointments or work on business or plan um, extra things. So I'm right down at that base level of functioning. And sometimes it can even, you know, be difficult to eat and drink water depending on how low functioning gets. 
But the thing about habits and building up all these processes and systems is they become more automatic because that neurological wiring in the brain, the more often you do a task, the more habitual it becomes. And it's like an actual road. It's a pathway for the electrical um, impulses through your brain. And the more you use it, the stronger it becomes and the easier it becomes for your brain to take that pathway. So what you can actually do is a lot of these systems and skills can be put on autopilot. So at the moment, yes, my functioning is so low that I've lost a lot of those habits, but they are still programmed into my brain because I've done them before. So they will come back to me more easily as I build it back up. When you're trying to do everything through willpower, that's when things get really difficult because you're trying to use your working memory and your executive functioning to do a whole bunch of new stuff that takes mental effort and you're going to get tired and you're going to burn out and those things might not necessarily last. And that's why the habit stacking is really important. That's why starting things up small and building onto it um, works a lot better than trying to do a whole bunch of things at once. And it's also why making little shifts and changes in your life is so much more easier and has a long-term more lasting effect than what I've personally experienced when going, like taking my kids to OTs and therapists. They have piled a bunch of homework onto us where we have to implement all this new stuff and it feels like effort to do more things my approach is to shift how you do things. So instead of it taking more energy, more mental effort, it's a little shift, a little change, and it doesn't take so much effort, just maybe a little bit of thought depending on what the system is. So it's been wonderful talking to you. If you're not subscribed to the Energy Empress podcast, please subscribe. If you've got kiddos who would benefit from um bedtime stories or meditations then please check out Elvaria meditations that is my channel I create them with my own kids sometimes they give me ideas they're very um positive empowering stories um and I do approach them with a very subtle um focus on that empowerment I do have all the understanding of psychology and neurology and parenting that can sometimes be seen in those meditations but it's very subtle the main point is that they are very magical stories about positivity and um, you know friendship and community and helping each other all that kind of stuff and until next time um I really need to think of a good sign off so I don't just ramble at the end of these things. I wish you best of luck. Um, check out my other podcast episodes if you haven't already. And I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye.